if the Bible is outspokenly against homosexuality, would that lead to bullying? Also, 4 in 10 say marriage is obsolete. These topics and more on today's Vantage Point. Vantage Point is brought to you by American Vision. For more about the topic of today's show, check out Thinking Straight in a Crooked World. You will find it at AmericanVision.com. Gary DeMar, Joel McDermott. We're uh, the male version of The View, I guess. <laughs> so let's, let's discuss this. Uh, let's hope it doesn't reduce <laughs> to that <laughs> pack of fun. That's there. right. Well, we're, we're as opposite sexually as we are politically, I suppose. But uh, Gary, what do you make of Joy Bear's comments on the View regarding? Well, she was she was interviewing uh, Joel Osteen, uh, and Joel Osteen had said, "But if you come to our church, Joy, you would see people from all walks of life. We don't have a sign at the door that says no gays, no drunkards, no people on drugs. We're for everybody. We're not against people, so we're helping them to become." And then. Joy Bear chimes in, uh, responds and says, but when you say that the Bible is against gays, that makes people get bullied. Uh, and bad things happen to people because of what, what uh, the people say about that. Um, the first thing I would like to say is, I think Joel Osteen is right. We, sh you know, we don't put a sign outside that says, sinner's not welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, we put the, and, I, and, and it's a little unfortunate today that the church is kind of like, oh, look at, that, that person coming to our church, and I know that he's a drunkard or whatever the case might be. I mean, the, the place, the, the, the church, they talk about it being a sanctuary. The church is a sanctuary. It is a place where um, you, can, you can gain understanding of what your sins are. Now, if you just say, well, these aren't sins, that's one thing. But Jesus met with sinners. He met with drunkards and met with tax prostitutes. gatherers and prostitutes of the day. So Joel Osteen is correct. Now, Joey Bear... Uh, essentially goes off track and she says, well, the Bible is against homosexuality and it leads to bullying. And my point is the Bible is against all kinds of things mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily lead to bullying. Um, there are literally tens of thousands of, of laws on the books at the, at the federal regis uh, registry, uh, register uh, and they don't lead to bullying. Uh, so why is she just picking out the, the homosexual issue here? So um, I didn't hear what Joel Osteen said in response uh, to that, uh, or Joel on the panel here. What? Yeah, I don't know if he actually got to respond much. I think he kind of stood his ground on what he had said before. I will give him credit on this because historically in interviews, when he's been put on the spot, even to the point of saying, is Jesus the only way to salvation, he kind of waffled at the moment and had to come back later and reassert, no, I really do hold this and kind of apologize to his, his audience. Uh, but on this issue, uh, even during another segment of the show when they are pressing him on the issue of homosexuality, he said, he, he said I'm not going to exclude you from coming to my church, but you know, the scripture right. does condemn it, and uh, it's not God's best is the way he was, that's just the way he talks, he's trying to make it sound good. Uh, God is against it, you know. but God's also against murder and, and a whole host of other things, and, and you know, because the Bible speaks against murder, there's nobody saying, therefore, this is going to lead to bullying. <laughs> I mean, you, you, can, you can make that, like you said, for any issue. Yeah, is the state bullying and when, he, when it finds somebody who's committed a crime and puts them in jail? Is that right. bullying? Is the state bullying at that point because it has a law in the books that says this is wrong? Absolutely. And, and I would just turn that around to liberals like Bear and several others on The View that uh, use the state for social welfare ends and paying for health insurance and all those kind of things, all the liberal agenda they support, which is by definition bullying people, going into their pockets and taking money to pay for someone else's right. causes. Well I mean, I mean that's yeah. that's where the real bullying. That's where ninety. But if the state does it, it's, it's not okay. bullying. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point. What? Let's. Do you want to talk about bullying? Let's let's really get down to level ground and talk. But they're about helping bullying. people, Joel. Yeah. Well. Yeah, maybe I mean, we can help some homosexuals get straight if we <laughs> point them back. No, I mean, I'm not advocating that by any means, but uh, you know, th there is the issue to address there. Uh, at what point is it right to use state force? And of course, in, in our view, it's a very limited, tiny bit. And in their view, they apply it basically to every area of life. It's just the opposite of our view. We believe people should be left alone for 
just about every area of life. They believe the state should govern and regulate every area of life, and so therefore every area of life is bullied uh, from their perspective, although they wouldn't call it that. Well, I think about back in the late 70s and early 80s, homeschoolers. Uh, you know, we, we see how many freedoms we have today, uh, uh, parents have today in sending and teaching their children at home. But there was a time when that wasn't the case. Okay. And the state was, in fact, bullying. And they would, they would find a, a couple in a, in a, in a small, small town. They would take them to court. Um, and uh, they would have, this is why organizations like the Rutherford Institute uh, got started, was because these parents were, in fact, being bullied by the state. Uh, and, and, and again, you're, this is what's happened in our culture. We, we've, we accept a certain type of bullying. It's okay to use the power of the state to bully, bully people, right. uh, but to speak out against. If you, especially if you go to the, what they call the uh, viewpoint discrimination type stuff that we've gone through recently. Oh yeah, the well, I'll give, let, let's just, yeah, let's <laughs> kind of talk about that. Uh, uh, we, we hired a couple, we, we sent out a, a feelers for, to, to hire somebody to, to, for customer service and we had a number of people come in and one lady claimed we discriminated against her because uh, she was Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. Now we are 501c3 and in, within the law it says that we can if we wanted to. This w isn't the reason why we didn't hire her. We didn't hire her because of her, her uh, work record. Work record. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what was kind of ironic about all this, we hired a black woman in, instead. Um, and so the woman who says we, we uh, discriminated against her because she was Roman Catholic, she goes to the EEOC, which is the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, and charged us with discrimination. And so we get this very ominous uh, letter back saying that we had to pay $55,000 to this woman on the because of our, discrim our discrimination. Yeah, there's more else they were going to take us to court. Yeah, it would take and, us to court. And now, how is that not bullying yeah. say, by bullying. any yeah. definition of the word? Especially yeah. when the law was so clear and all this. But anyway, we had to wait out more than two years of dealing with, with, with this. We finally won because we said, we are not, we're not giving into this at all. We, and we believe, I believe, I don't know if I can't prove it, I believe it was viewpoint discrimination. They went on our website, they saw our beliefs, and this is a government agency. Atlanta is very, very liberal in this area, and began attack attack us on all this. Now they would deny that, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but this happens all the time. The state is always bullying us, uh, and uh, and and people who believe that the state is our our parent, our father, uh, don't see any problem with it. They just see it as discipline, proper mm -hmm. discipline on us. And they're trying to to get laws written to force people more and more to, to not be able to say anything against homosexuality and, and to legalize homosexual marriage and those types of things and basically using the law to you know, establish hate crime right. legislation and that's always trying to be increased by liberals and what is that but bullying? Saying you can't say this word in this circumstance or else we'll sue you and put you in jail, take your money, whatever. Uh, it's liberals always using the force of the state to force their agenda on society. It, it's the ultimate issue of bullying. Now we have uh, another topic uh, regarding marriage and the perception that people have about marriage in our country seems to be declining considerably. Four in ten say marriage is obsolete. This is on Yahoo News. Uh, what do you all make of that? I mean, is this, uh, this going to improve in the future, or are we just heading down a slippery slope? Well, prior to the show, Joel, you made a good comment about what this is, this is phrased in such a way that, that it gives the impression that four in ten approvingly say marriage mm -hmm. is becoming obsolete. That's not necessarily clear. Right. Mm -hmm. It may be, oh, do, are you getting the impression that many people believe that uh, marriage is obsolete and people might say, well, yeah, I believe that there are people out there who believe that, but I don't necessarily take that Well, take homosexuality that would affect that too because, mm -hmm. but isn't it interesting that so many homosexual couples are pushing for marriage as if it is a significant covenant that is to be made? <laughs> yeah. and, and then on the other side, it's being torn down. And of course, the children that come of these uh, unmarried unions end up being taken care of by the state again. Yeah, I would like so, to know the age spread too. You look at young young kids, uh, high school, co well, mostly college, and in their twenties and so forth, who end up who live together. There's no real commitment there. Um, and what percentage of them are, is in this? As people get older, they begin to see how important marriage is. But if you go back and look at some of these statistics, there's a Heritage Foundation scholar, uh, Robert Rector, said, out of wedlock, childbearing, and single parenthood. 
are the principal causes of child poverty and welfare dependence in the U.S. Hmm. Children born out of wedlock to never married women are uh, poor 50% of the time. By contrast, children born within a marriage which remains intact are poor 7% of the time. Thus, the absence of marriage increases the frequency of child poverty 700%. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I contend that there, there is a, we are, we are, we're living in a time period where the state has become our father, uh, the paternalistic state. And so why bother getting married? You have black women. I think the illegitimacy rate against young black women is close to 70%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's much higher in the black community. And you have men who just take advantage of these women, you know, leave the children behind and take off. And this is no big deal because the, the state ends up taking care of these dependent children. You have aid to dependent children. Um, uh, there's a very, very good book. We offer it. And if, any, if you haven't read it, you really need to, called Idols for Destruction. And uh, Herbert Schlossberg talks about the paternalistic state. Mm -hmm. And p people perceive the state now as their god and as their father, the, the provider. And so why bother with marriage when you've got the state to be able to take care of your children and take care of all of your needs and wants? Yeah. And then, of course, you have the political issue that when more people, the more people get on to that dole, so to speak, that begins to spiral because those people have a certain, uh, well, they have an interest to vote a certain right. way to right. the person who's going to give them more handouts. And so right. when you combine the power of providence with the power of the gun, uh, you have a recipe for social disaster. And it's really, it's just a matter of years, decades, when the whole thing collapses. The parasite is going to consume the host pretty quickly. Absolutely. Be nothing left. Well, this is where we're at. A, we're almost at a 50-50 point in our nation where you have the, the dependent, the dependency factor among 50% of the population. And then you have the, uh, the, the producer, producing side of the population. And once you cross that barrier, mm -hmm. once the dependency uh, percentages move over to 50%, it, it, unless you have a complete collapse in a society, you can't get it back. It's, it's very difficult, and, and of course our tax system is structured to where the top 3% of earners pay 50% or more of the tax burden. And, and They're not going to be earners anymore if they... Exactly. You, know. you lose the incentive to, to do the work, and, and the whole thing just begins to, continue to continually spiral mm -hmm. downward. Right. Well, this can't be good because, uh, I mean, I don't understand how, I guess the liberal left gets elected based on their ability to give these handouts but when you look at what it does to these children uh, coming from uh, single parent homes and so forth and stuck on welfare and it's destroying the society that we live in. Yeah, we've, we've, been, subs we've been dis subsidizing this type of behavior uh, since the so-called great society. You know, give a great name yeah. to something, the great yeah. society. Well, we, we've, we've seen uh, illiteracy, illiteracy uh, school dropout, and illegit illegitimacy rates go up since the 1960s yeah. and, and, and uh, when does it stop? Uh, Johnson's administration. So and the right. classic line is when you subsidize something, you get more of it. Yeah. Boy, have we seen that. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of Vantage Point. Send your questions or comments to vantagepoint at AmericanVision.org. Thank you. For more related to today's show, check out the highly rated title, Thinking Straight in a Crooked World, by best-selling author Gary DeMar, president of American Vision. Gary DeMar shows the power of biblical thinking and the desperate need for it in the church today. Thinking Straight in a Crooked World is designed to identify the bends in the road of ideas and repair them with biblical straight thinking, from worldview to apologetics. You will find it at AmericanVision.com. Is she Italian? She's Italian. She's an embarrassment to the Italian yeah, race I think her. for being here. Oh, this is yours. That's my coffee. Okay. <laughs> He's a Nazi. Nazi. <laughs>